Good morning. I'm going to go to Kansas this weekend. And uh, my trip to Kansas is it for me in the Army. It's, it's where I close out this chapter. Officially close it out. Legally close it out. But in order to do that right, I got some things I got to take care of here. Some of you might think that my hair is already pretty short. So I'm about to go get my very last haircut because I have to. Last time cutting my hair, literally after having to do it for 27 years because I am pretty much obligated to by regulations. Last haircut because I have to. Let's go. Trimmed up. Last one that I have to get. Okay, let's pack for my last trip back to the army. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good morning from Kansas. So a quick evening trip from St. Petersburg, Florida, and then drove 30 minutes out here in the country where my friend lives here in Kansas. So I'm here in this camper for the next couple days as I transition and officially retire out of the army. So what does that look like? I'm gonna show you. And in this COVID world, what does retiring and transitioning from the army look like? Like the eaches, like the literal transition part, not the six month process, but the day, the week that they literally usher you over to terminal or transition leave. That's what I'm doing this week. Again, it's Monday morning and my first appointment in this process is a phone call. Due to COVID, the finance office is going to call me to transition my pay. We'll see how that works. And then after that, later today, I'm going to go on to the installation at Fort Leavenworth in uniform. I got some minor things to do for clearing. I have to go visit some people in person. Uh, but I will tell you that previously, uh, back in Florida, I called and cleared a lot of places. Uh, so that's interesting and I think efficient. But first, finance. They're gonna call me here pretty soon. Hello. Yeah, this is him. How are you? Is it Sean? Awesome. Good, good. Oh, you know I am. <laughs> Bye-bye.
that was it. That was my finance appointment. Learned some pretty good things that I didn't know. So let's talk about that. So the first thing you did was go through my finance record to make sure I didn't have any debts or anything owed to me from the government. Number two, before you retire, go in to your MyPay account and transition everything over from your military email to civilian email so you can maintain your MyPay because you're gonna use MyPay still as your method to check your pay and allowances as you retire. Didn't know that. Processing your travel for your final move. There's a new online system to submit your travel voucher. He says it's significantly shorter in period of time to get your money back. Or you can submit it scanned hard copy to the DFAS email. And he said that'll take about 20 days. But he said you won't see it until you're done with the military. And then hopefully, as soon as you're retired, you'll get your travel pay. And lastly, most importantly, what's the pay timeline look like? So May 31st is my final active duty day in the Army, right? On the 1st of June, I am a civilian on the retired rolls. So he was very clear and we went back and forth just to make sure I am clear and I understood. The 1st and the 15th of May are normal pay. And then I'm put on retired rolls, so they gotta make sure that if there are any last minute debts that I am that I owe or anything that I am owed from the government, that is reflected on my final active duty pay which gets processed, he said, three to five days after my transition. So he said, your final active duty paycheck will be most likely around the 5th of June. And then my first retiree paycheck comes 30 days after I'm placed on the retired rolls. So placed on retired rolls 1st of June, he said, you should see your retired pay on the 1st of July. And then from that point on, every 30 days. Good to know. Okay, beautiful Kansas spring day. A little chillier than Florida. I mean, it's not cold, but a little chillier. And as you can see, I'm in uniform. It's been three months since I've been in uniform. I'm gonna do some clearing today. Two more days of clearing after this. I'll be done. Let's go. Cleared education. Security done. Dental done in my laptop clear the school It's 
bittersweet. So we're ready. So they broke up my final out retirement appointments in two separate days. I did all my clearing on Monday. And today is Wednesday. Today I have a single appointment, the final appointment. The appointment where I sign out of the Army and get my DD-214. Shaved, in uniform, and ready for the last paragraph of the last chapter of this book we have called Our Army Journey. This is my closing paragraph. Adjutant General Center here on the installation. It's a place where you do all the admin stuff and personnel and, and most specifically to me, retirement services. I'm not gonna take the camera in with me. But when I come out, I'll be done. That's a weird thought for me. Let's go. done. Papers were signed. I even got a small congratulations. Thank you for your service. You're done. See you again someday as a retiree using my blue card. This is it. Time to take it off. My last time. Here I am in Florida. Sorry about that. So, before I end this trip officially, I wanted to tell you something that happened. 
So as I boarded the plane in Kansas City, I boarded with a gift that was given to me for my retirement. And because of the quickness of the trip, I didn't have a way to ship it. I just brought it on the plane. Well, to anyone who can read, it was obvious what the gift was. So I gave the gift to the steward who then put it in the plane's coat closet for safe keeping instead of above in the overhead or below the seat. Well, American Airlines, flight 652 from Kansas City to Dallas, Fort Worth, truly humbled me and honored me and touched my heart. So as we're in the air and we leveled out and the captain's making his announcements, he tells everybody they have a important passenger on the plane and that uh, he told them that I was on the plane with him and that today was my last day and I had retired. I couldn't believe what happened. The entire plane erupted in thunderous applause and shouts and cheers. I was touched beyond imagination. And then he said to the, to the passengers, when we get to DFW, Everybody, please keep your seats and let Colonel Harrelson get off the plane first. So that's what happened. They landed, they kept their seats, and I got up, I lifted my ball cap in the air, and that plane erupted. And I, I was so touched and so humbled, I didn't know what to do. What a phenomenal way to literally bookend my career on my flight home. Thank you, Lord, for that experience. That was amazing. So I didn't film anything else. I didn't film the flight from Dallas to Tampa. I didn't film anything. I was so touched and moved by that. And I didn't, if you understand, right, I didn't want to ruin the moment trying to film it. I just wanted to hold that in my heart, that capture that moment. I'm sure you understand. So I'm home in Florida. I'm done. And on to the next chapter. Good night.